Hello, I previously created a bot tutorial series that introduced beginners to creating Discord bots and up receiving a lot of positive feedback on it. So if you're a beginner, I highly recommend checking it out. However, many of you have also reached out and requested higher capabilities and more complex features to be covered in these tutorials. So I've decided to start a brand new series for these Discord bots where I cover some more complex features and also recode the basic foundation of the bot using a more structured and organized system. All of the code in this video and following videos of the series will be linked in the descriptions. Enjoy. First, let's create a new directory for the bot. And then open up in a code editor of your choice. Now you'll want to check that you have the correct version of Node installed. Open up a terminal and type in node-v. Make sure this is at least 16.6 or higher. Otherwise, you'll need to upgrade or install Node. I'll leave instructions in a pinned comment down below. Next, run the following commands, npm init dash y and install the packages with npm i discord.js space dot env. Next, go to the package.json file and enter type colon module. This will allow us to use the import syntax. Next, create the index.js file. This is where our bot will start. Add a new folder, we'll call it classes, and add another folder, call it commands, and lastly, events. Let's get started by creating our bot class. Go ahead to the classes folder and create a new file, which we will name bot.js. In this file, first we want to grab the absolute path so we can find where we want to fetch the code for the commands and event of our loader. So we'll need to import some packages. We'll import path and import file URL to path from URL. Next, we'll define a variable called const, and I'm going to just prefix it with two underscores, dir name. This will contain the absolute path to this uh, file. So path dot directory name, file URL to path, uh, import dot meta dot URL. So this will use the metadata of this file itself in order to find where it is located. Next, we're going to write a little helper function, which is going to be called get files. To do that, we'll need to also import in another package called fs. fs stands for file system. This function will take in a single variable called directory, which is going to contain the string going to that directory or path to that directory, and it's going to return read directory sync, which is going to return all of the files located in that directory or in that folder. So we're going to pass in directory and we're going to filter out any files that um, actually end with .js. So we're only going to be looking at files that are actual JavaScript files. Next we'll create our actual bot class. So class bot extends and we're going to extend the actual discord client object we're going to hit that and it's going to automatically import that in from here. We're going to create a constructor which is going to initialize the variables. So we want to call the super args. So this would be constructing the Discord client itself. And we're going to also add in two, uh, three extra variables. We're going to have prefix which is going to contain the string of any messages that should start with this in order to trigger a response from the bot. We have this dot commands, which we will contain, um, which we will have contain all of the different commands, and we're going to be using a Discord collection for that, as well as events, which we're also going to put into a Discord collection. Next, let's add another function. This we will call start, and I'll take in a token, which is going to contain the string of our bot token, and we're going to have it just login. So super dot login token. So this will be equivalent to using the Discord client dot login and then pass in our token. We'll also be writing the start of two other functions, um, load events, 
which we will leave empty for now, and load commands, which we will also leave empty for now. However, we can write the git command, which will take in a command name, and it will return from the commands uh, collection the matching command name. And lastly, of course, we want to actually export this. So export default bot. And our bot class is, for the time being, complete. Now we will move on to create our command class. Go back to the classes folder and create a file called command.js. And here we'll type class command. And under command, we'll have another constructor. This time, we'll take in the client and name. So the client will be the Discord client, and the name will be the name of the command itself. We we'll want to initialize the variables client with the Discord client itself and the name with the actual name that we pass in. And this is very simple. All we need to have left is export default command. Although this looks very simple right now, in the future, when we add more complicated things in videos, this will get more complicated. Now let's create the event class. We're going to copy what we have for command because to start off it is very sim similar. Event.js, paste it in. I'm going to edit this to be event, and edit this to be event as well. We're going to be adding one additional property here, which is going to be called listener. And we're going to initialize this in this way. We'll also want to add in a function called underscore run, which is going to take in an arbitrary amount of arguments because different events actually have different amounts of arguments. We're going to wrap in here around a try catch and we're going to execute the function. We don't want that underscore because we'll be passing in a function to event called run. You'll see this very shortly when we actually create it. And we'll want to add a actual catch. And if there is an error, we're going to put it to the error of the console.error. And then we're going to create two more functions. One is called start listener. This will actually start the client.on and it's going to start listening to whatever that event name is. And if that event name does have a trigger, we're going to call that function that we specified earlier. And we're going to also have another called stop listener, which is going to do look very similar, but it's going to be client.off. So we're going to stop listening to that uh, event. Now we want to go back to our original bot class and we want to finish those two functions, load events and load commands, which we had not finished previously. We're going to be using our git files, our helper function, and it's going to take in uh, this comma and the directory name variable that we had, and we're going to relatively fetch uh, anything inside this events folder right here. So we're going to have it look like this. And for every file that we find in there, we're going to go through and we'll want to first, let's grab the name. So event name, and this is going to be uh, the same thing as the file name, except we want to get rid of the .js at the very end. So we will do this, that will get rid of it. And we'll also want to actually import it in because over here, all we have is the file name. We don't have the actual contents of the file. So we'll import it in. So await import. And we'll want to pass this back in. So I'm going to copy it, paste it in here. And we'll attach here at the end event file name. And at the very end here, we want to add a dot default. And then next, we'll actually construct it. So event equals new event. I know the name is a little bit confusing, but make sure your capitalization is correct. Double check that. And this, and we're going to pass in the event name. And after all of that, now we want to actually initialize the event listener. So we can use the start listener function. 
And lastly, we want to actually add this to our uh, client.events property, which we can access through this dot events. Um, and dot set event name. And we're going to set it equal to the actual event object itself. And we are finished with the load events. Now for the load commands, it is very similar to our load events. So I will copy what we have for load events, paste it in, and edit some things. Um, one of the biggest differences here is we won't have the start listener, so go ahead, you can delete that. Otherwise, it's basically just changing all of these names. Uh, make sure you change this to commands, um, so that way we're actually pulling from the commands folder and not the events folder. And the rest is just changing all of the event to name. So we are now finished with all of our classes, so we can go to events and create our first event. We will call this ready.js. This event is triggered when the Discord bot is finished loading in and logging in. So first we'll want to import in our actual event class. Make sure if you're using the autofill, it does not end it with .js. You'll want to make sure you do that, otherwise you're going to get some nasty errors. Next, you'll want to have class. I'm going to call it the same thing as the actual name of the event itself. So class ready, and I'm going to extend the event class. Remember when we had the arbitrary run function? Well, now is where we're going to use it. We're going to call a function or create a function called run. And this function will get called whenever that event is emitted and triggered. And it's very simple. All we're going to have it do is print out uh, logged in as and since this is extending event an event we have the client property we're able to do this dot client and we can just grab the uh, clients tag from that property right there and of course at the end of it make sure we do uh, export this so export default ready next go to our index.js file where we will actually start the bot first import in env config this will allow us to grab the environmental variables from our env file containing our bot token uh, we can set that up as well so create a file called env in here type in token equals and we'll be populating this in a minute here but make sure you don't have any spaces go back to index.js i also want to import in bot Go ahead and hit tab on that. Again, the autofill for some reason does not include .js, so make sure you include that, otherwise you're gonna get errors. Next, we'll actually construct our client. So using our constructor bot, I'm gonna pass in some uh, arguments. So first is intents with the S. Um, we'll include the intents for guild messages. Messages and intents dot flags dot guilds we'll need these two both in order to uh, intercept messages being sent in a guild and for the bot to actually respond to them and lastly we'll have the prefix variable which i will just initialize to a dot then we can call our load events our load commands and lastly client dot start and we'll pass in the token from our env variables. Now you'll want to go to the URL shown on screen right now, which is discord.com slash developer slash applications. This is the developer portal where you can create our bot. So click on the top right hand corner, new application. In here, give it a name. I will call it Nico Testbot. Click on create. After you've hit create, uh, you might see on the left hand side or you might need to click on these and click on the bot tab over here you'll want to click on add bot click on yes do it and you'll have your bot here um, you'll want to click on reset token this will ask you to enter your two-factor off upon entering your two-factor authentication it should give you the actual bot token here go ahead and click on copy and go to your code and go ahead and paste it in in here, make sure you also scroll down here under the message content intent. You'll need to make sure we have that turned on. So go ahead and make that blue and click on save changes. 
Next, we'll want to actually invite our Discord bot to the server that we want. So go ahead and click on the three again. Click on OAuth. You'll want to go to the URL generator. Click on the bot. And that's all we'll need for the time being. And scroll all the way down, all the way down to here, the generated URL. Go ahead and copy this, paste it in a new window, and add the bot to your server that you desire. Open up a terminal. Make sure your terminal is in the correct directory, which your index.js file is in. Type in node index.js and hit enter. You'll see very shortly here that we have successfully logged in. Type control C if you want to stop it, and then we can add our first command. Our command will be very simple. It'll just be a simple uh, ping command. So go ahead to the commands, click on new file, ping. Js. In here, we'll want to import in the command. Again, make sure you add the .js at the end. We'll call it class ping extends command. In here, async run message. Um, this will be taking this will be taking in a message object, which then we can use to reply to. So message dot reply with Pong. And of course, do not forget the export. Go to events, and we want to create one more event. Uh, this time it will be message create.js. This event will be triggered whenever a message is sent anywhere where the bot is able to listen to, which in this case, we want to look for when the message is sent in a guild. So first, we'll import in our event class again. Make sure you add .js class message create extends event. In here, we'll add a run. This will take in a message because the message create function uh, actually has an argument of message itself. First, we'll check if the message um, actually starts with our prefix, and if it doesn't, client dot prefix. If it doesn't start with our prefix, then we will return. Otherwise, we'll let we'll grab the command. So we're going to use our git command, and we will pass in the message content while replacing the prefix. So prefix, we're going to completely delete it. So with an empty string. And now if we found an actual command, so if a command was found, if it's not undefined, then we will run it. So command.run, we're going to pass in message like so. And lastly, export default message create. Now we're ready to run our bot once more. So go ahead, hit the up arrow key, and you'll have node index.js, hit enter. And if you don't see any error messages, then congratulations. Let's go to Discord and check it out. Now that we're in the server that it's in, you'll see in the top right um, that it is invited and it is online and in a channel where it's able to see and send messages. If we type in dot pong or sorry, dot ping, you'll see the bot responds. If we type in anything else, nothing will happen. If we start it with a dot and type in something else, nothing will happen. If you made it this far in the video, again, congratulations. We'll be doing more tutorials in the future. So if you want to stay up to date with things, be sure to hit the subscribe button.